Welcome back to the channel guys. We're back to work on the Vanderhall. Long story short, we're using the stock connecting rods. We have three of them done along with the piston rings. Where we ground down the piston ring, we sanded that out with a 1500 grit before installing on the piston. As you can see, the piston is not symmetrical, so we made sure to line them up exactly how the factory has them. Lettering on top for the connecting rod and the hole on top. Let's finish installing our last beautiful Carrillo piston from BNR. Then we will install the pistons into the cylinder using a piston ring installer to compress those rings and push it into the cylinder. So the pistons and rods are in for good. We have aligned the rings according to the ring orientation Carrillo provides. Top ring, second ring, top oil ring, bottom oil ring, along with all the right lubricants. We torque down the rods as well, according to this service manual. And she is spinning. Kind of hard to do it with the flywheel. No binding up, no weird noises. Once again, shout out to Bad News Racing. These Carrillo pistons are awesome. And this piston ring installer was pretty cool to use. Simply just put the piston in there. Clamp it down, stays in place, and then you lightly tap the top of the piston with the mallet. Had a few times, the ring got stuck on the edge here, but reset, tapped it again, went right in. So now I think we're ready to put the rest of this engine back together.
We've got the camshafts and the head back on the engine, including our oil pan along with the tensioner, the chain for the oil pump, and our sensor in the bottom. We opened a brand new head gasket kit from GM, new head bolts, bunch of new seals, and a new head gasket. Here are the old bolts, they're one-time use. So let's put these suckers in. And here we've got the OEM service manual on the exact pattern the new head bolts need to go in, along with the proper torquing procedure to 22 foot-pounds first, and then to 240 degrees, all in this pattern. So let's keep going. Well, check it out. Just got the valve cover on and the timing cover along with that new harmonic balancer. And we're using this CRC RTV silicone that I actually picked up on legit street cars. This stuff works beautifully and it's high temperature application. Now we've got a fuel rail, coil packs, a bunch of bolts and our cleaned injectors to slap in the top of the engine. And these are our old head bolts and all the old gaskets we just replaced. So let's keep going.
Well, this is where we are stopping on the engine tonight. And we've completed everything except this water pump pulley. I need a special tool to pull this old bent one off and slap the new one on. We will catch you guys in the morning. With the help of a friend, we got that water pump pulley off and we installed it already on the engine, spinning nice and straight along with the tensioner and the rest of the pulleys all in line. Now up there, I've been saving a lot of Vanderhall parts directly from Vanderhall. So we are gonna grab some boxes, pull them down and open them for you guys. We just cracked open our brand new welder from Yes Welder. This is the Yes Welder CT250, and it is a seven in one welder with all of these functions. This is gonna be perfect for our aluminum frame. We have our ground clamp connected on this port. We have our gas line connected to the welder. In the rear of this welder, there's a port for the gas to connect directly to the bottle. And right now we have pure argon for the aluminum for the TIG torch, which is right over here. And we have yet to set up the top with these components right here. And lastly, our 220 to 110 conversion for an outlet. This welder is so sick. It comes with extra hoses, a 220 to 110 conversion cable, and and along with the built-in air compressor in this machine, this is a water to air separator, which connects directly to the back of the machine, the right cable for stick welding, and the plasma gun. And they give you this diagram to show you exactly what needs to be plugged in on the front of the welder to set up whatever you're trying to do. So let's finish setting up the TIG torch and get to welding.
Well, for the past two nights, Ben from Benjamin Outdoors has been helping me set up this TIG machine from Yes Welder. Like you saw when I first started out, my welds were looking like this, which is just terrible. Ben helped me dial in this machine, and now we're making beads like this. Yes Welder has a smart TIG function where if you click it, you can automatically adjust what metal thickness you're welding. Right now we're on 1 8 aluminum, and it auto sets the amperage, so at 95, and you can adjust what position you're welding, flat, vertical, or overhead. Yesterday, Ben and I found that actually being off smart TIG made the welding way better. We are on AC TIG. We're using a foot pedal for the TIG welding. And these are a bunch of other adjustments. I'm still learning all this stuff. But this welder is super easy to use. Now, like you guys saw on my last welding pass, it turned out terrible and I'll show you why. On the second to last pass, I accidentally touched the filler rod to the tungsten which ended up absolutely ruining the tungsten, causing this to be my next weld. Now, another thing I'm finding out with this TIG welding is cleanliness of surface plays a huge part in how nice your welds turn out. Now, another thing I'm still working on is my ending. I keep getting these craters on the end of my beads, but I gotta work on that. But so far, I'm pretty happy with the result and big thanks to Ben for helping me figure this out. I'm cleaning the surface with some rubbing alcohol or wax and grease remover, which has given me some really nice results. Now, we will keep practicing, but we're gonna move on to the frame, start cleaning it up getting it ready for our new pieces of aluminum. Well, it's not really going how I hoped it would go. Cleaned off all the areas, wiped it down, and my gaps just keep getting bigger. And in some spots, it actually stays closed. Now, I've heard with aluminum, you really don't want any gaps. You want it to be very, very close together. I was kind of getting some beads here, but it still would leave the gap open for some reason. I believe this frame was put together with an aluminum spool gun. That's how they put this thing together. As you can see, it's just kind of globbed on here. I can imagine TIG might be a little bit more tedious in those hard to reach places. But Nonetheless, we're gonna keep trying on this, trying to get it to look good. But it is already pretty late here, so we're gonna pause on the frame. I've got a lot of learning to do. That Yes Welder put in some work these past few days, did a beautiful job, super easy to use, along with the foot pedal. Hopefully by the next one, we've got a solution. So we'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.